The history of appropriation probably goes back 30,000 years when a French cave artist liked what she saw on a rock wall and instead of going outside to observe a dangerous animal and possibly getting hurt, opted to recreate a beast already drawn. French Dada artist Marcel Duchamp began the ready-made art movement after he attached a bicycle wheel on a wooden stool, two objects produced by others and used without credit. Pablo Picasso tore pages from newspapers and magazines to use on his canvases. The American Robert Rauschenberg employed found objects, bicycles, clocks, newspaper clippings, and photographs in his work that he called combines, elaborate and large murals on canvas. Jasper Johns liked the look of the American flag. Roy Lichtenstein enjoyed the aesthetics of comic books. Andy Warhol drank a lot of Campbell's soup. Later, Barbara Kruger combined found photographs with bold and provocative text, and British artist Damien Hirst liked to show dead animals. Finding objects and turning them into art has a long tradition and is acceptable. Taking credit for something you didn't create is not. For example, almost all of the photographs of the American Civil War attributed to Matthew Brady and the images of New York City slums credited to Jacob Rees were not taken by the portrait artist and social reformer. They paid professional photographers to take the pictures and took, took credit for them. About 100 years later, photographer Oliviero Toscani produced controversial advertising campaigns for the Italian clothing giant Benetton, in which photojournalistic images he found were used in print ads and billboards labeled the most controversial campaign ever by the Guinness World Records is a picture of HIV AIDS victim David Kirby on his deathbed surrounded by distraught family members that originally was published in Life magazine. Toscani colorized the black and white image to make it more sensational. Shepard Ferry's appropriation of the likeness of Andre the Giant used without permission in his Obey Giant stencil work seen in figure 12.1, is a tame comparison. But when graphic artist Baxter Orr produced his parody in figure 12.2, Ferry's lawyer sent Baxter a cease and desist letter. Orr noted that the threat to sue him was ridiculous for someone who built their empire on appropriating other people's images. Obey Giant has become like Tide and Coca-Cola. Inspiration from others who have come before is one of the reasons there are museums, books, and websites devoted to thousands of artists. Appropriation of another's work must be carefully considered. Although it hasn't happened to me, I would assume that being sued is not the most pleasant experience you can undertake.